to managing the government's books responsibly so that we continue to be in a position to respond to any external shocks that might come our way. Question number two, the Hon. Simon Bridges. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. Does she stand by all her government's statements and actions? The Right Hon. Prime Minister. Whakalokalahi atu, Mr Speaker. Yes. That's right. You're not a government. How many cents per litre is the regional fuel tax and when did it come into effect? Uh, Mr Speaker, the regional fuel tax came in earlier this year in July and is 10 cents uh, a litre as applied by, uh, as local government chooses to implement in Auckland. Then does she still stand by her statement last week that since October 2017, quote, petrol prices have risen roughly 39 cents, of which 6.8 cents at that point could be attributed to taxes and levies? Mr Speaker, again. If the House will indulge me, I'll again give the quote that I gave at the post-Cabinet. Who, who made that interjection? Uh, the, the member will stand, withdraw and apologise. Uh, I stand, withdraw and apologise. No, the member will do I it. I withdraw and apologise. Thank you. Last warning. I will give the same quote that I gave in the post-Cabinet press conference from which the member is quoting me, to which I said, between 27 October 2017 and 28 September 2018, this is where we have data. Mr Speaker, I was quoting directly from the latest data provided by MB, which is exactly the same data that that side of the House used every single day they were in government. So in light of that, did she or no one in her office actually go and check their work um, given that they'd put on those extra taxes of a regional fuel tax and an excise tax that had gone through Cabinet and she'd done it? Mr Speaker, I spoke openly about both of those in that post-Cabinet press conference as well. Mr Speaker, MB has fully acknowledged that they need to improve their modelling to take into account the regional, the regional fuel tax. And, Mr Speaker, they also need to acknowledge up front that they discount 14 cents in that modelling for coupons and fuel cards. But, Mr Speaker, I want to draw it back to the point here. Either the member on that side of the House thinks consumers are dealing with an issue with overpriced fuel generally, or he doesn't. In February 2015, he wrote a letter to all of the fuel companies asking them to bring their prices down. Clearly, he thought it was a problem then, but he doesn't now. If MB need to improve their modelling, why at her post-cab press conference was she at such pains to hang her hat on it? Mr Speaker, I use the modelling that we have available to us in the same way that he did when he was in office. And Mr Speaker, it would, have been, it would have been the same data he used when he decided in 2015 to write to the fuel companies and say there was a problem, something his government never resolved. They ignored him, they did nothing, and consumers are continuing to feel it. Why did she not include the regional fuel tax when she said petrol taxes had only increased by 6.8 cents a litre, given that it came into effect on 1 July this year? Mr Speaker, I was using the numbers to give the uh, proportion across that period of time for which excise was accountable relative to the increases that we have seen. And Mr Speaker, if I was being fair, I'd also acknowledge that some of the most significant margin increases we have seen have been since 2008. This has been a problem for a long time. We're the ones doing something about it because that last government failed. How can New Zealanders have confidence in her and her government's ability to deal with the cost of living rises when she relies on numbers that do not even measure the increase in petrol taxes her government has imposed and in July and October of this year? Speaker, it is known to everyone what we have done with both excise and regional fuel tax. It's been clear because we campaigned on it. We made it absolutely clear that if we wanted to invest in infrastructure, it was necessary to have the regional fuel tax. To imply otherwise is ludicrous. And Mr Speaker, those families that we're talking about also know that we campaigned on a $5 billion families package, increasing the minimum 
minimum wage, abolishing the letting fees, making sure that we had a winter energy payment to put extra money in those pockets of those who need it most, paid parental leave. All the while, our excise increases were less than yours the entire time you were in office. Um, I'm just going to remind the front. The, yes. Order. With inflation numbers showing, petrol prices have increased by 19 per cent in the last year, more than any other item. Why is she still going ahead with more than 24 cents of petrol tax increases in the space of just three years? Mr Speaker, again, as I addressed extensively in our last question, we're working to both increase the incomes of low and middle income New Zealanders whilst acknowledging that we have a significant infrastructure deficit. Every single cent that comes from that excise and regional fuel tax goes into building the infrastructure that that last government never built, despite the fact that I have to say Back when the last government was bringing in nine cents worth of excise increases, Jerry Brownlee then said excise increases in recent years have helped maintain the real value of the land transport fund. He said that as he brought in the exact same excise in the form of nine cents that we have. Supplementary question, the right honourable Winston Peters. Prime Minister, is the Prime Minister prepared to explain all this to Mr Bridges in a personal note if I can find the crayon? <laughs> I, 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 think, I think the member does know what's wrong with it. <laughs> the member has been here for a very long time. <laughs> I'm on my feet. Who interjected? The mem that member will stand withdrawn and apologise. I withdraw and apologise. And he's on his final warning for this question time as well. The member has been here for a very long time. He knows that one cannot use irony as part of questions. How long will it take for the Commerce Commission to undertake a market study uh, into fuel prices? Uh, less time than it took for his government to do something about it. He wrote in 2015 and we're still waiting for this to be fixed. A point of order, the Honourable Jerry uh, Brown. Mr Speaker, you appear to have just taken three questions off us. Yes. What for? Because, because we've just listened to very extensive the explanations of questions member, from member, the Prime Minister. Member will, re resume. member will resume his seat now. The member will resume his seat. I took questions off because the member interjected while a question was being asked. Um, we had, I think, while I was previously on my feet, at least three members who interjected, only one of whom was honest enough to admit it. Um, and I was soft on the others. Uh, if the member is suggesting that we roll back the rules or that he has an exemption from them, uh, then, I'm, then I'm not prepared to do it. And I think the, going back to the Deputy Prime Minister, I think it was relatively clear from the look on the Deputy Prime Minister's face that he, he did accept uh, the fact that he had acted inappropriately again. Order. A point of order, the Honourable Jerry Brown. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, firstly I don't uh, argue with you about who it is that makes a decision about what an interjection is or is not. So I accept that you have uh, said that my suggesting that the uh, Deputy Prime Minister was being harshly treated uh, was in fact a, uh, uh, sorry, misunderstood, was in fact uh, an interjection. But nonetheless, the Deputy Prime Minister breached standing orders in a very deliberate way and paid no price. But for sympathising with him, we lose three questions. Now, that's no way to run this House in a reasonable fashion. Does the member have a further supplementary? The Honourable Simon Bridges. Does the Prime Minister know how long it will take the Commerce Commission to undertake a market study into fuel prices? Mr Speaker, obviously we're changing the legislation over the next two weeks. There's then a statutory process 
Uh, the minister will go through that takes uh, uh, from memory around a month, so I would have thought in the first half of next year. Uh, again, Mr Speaker, I would again put emphasis on the fact that in 2017, the last government tried to do this work unsuccessfully. Uh, our expectation is that we, of course, now with uh, the ability to undertake this market study, will be able to do it properly and finish the job the last government didn't. Once the Commerce Commission is reported back, how long will it take to act on any recommendations? Mr Speaker, obviously I'm going to wait for that process to be completed, but obviously this is something we're quite focused on. Is it correct that if the Prime Minister wanted, she could immediately legislate to remove the regional fuel tax and halt increases to the national excise tax, changes that would immediately ease the cost of living for Kiwis? Mr right. Speaker, as I have said, I cannot guarantee that that would be directly passed on to consumers. What I can guarantee, though, is every cent that comes out of excise goes directly into projects in the likes of Auckland, where we're losing productivity, where those families are already paying the price of being stuck in congestion and being unable to move around their city, and provides genuine alternative transport options for them. Is it true that petrol taxes are roughly four times the size of imported margins? What, sorry? Roughly Import four times. Time. Is it true that petrol taxes are roughly four times the size of importer margins? Mr Speaker, I haven't got that figure in front of me, but what I can say is that over, uh, for instance, a 10-year, uh, over the last decade, uh, that since the start of 2008, petrol margins increased by 21 cents. The margin trend uh, was up overall uh, about 124 per cent. So we have seen a significant change, one that on this side of the House we think warrants investigation, but clearly that side of the House has changed their tune since they were last in government. Why won't she take immediate action to ease the cost of living by removing her government's new petrol taxes, given it's clear that the ComCom and their decisions will take a good year, uh, and that those imported margins are some four times the size uh, of the petrol taxes in total? Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, we order. actually... Yeah, yeah, the I member, did the member want to ask the question again? I'm yeah. sorry. I, 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 I knew I, what I, I was not, trying to you, say, though. The Prime Minister gets it. I Thank get you. the gist. Um, I'll reverse the last part of your um, reference. Um, uh, and Mr Speaker, uh, when it comes to the cost of living, of course that that is a focus for this government, which is everything we have done far outstrips anything that a consumer then would be paying at the pump via regional fuel tax. Uh, the Working for Families package on average delivering $75 a week, minimum wage increases, winter energy payments, uh, far outstrips anything that consumers are experiencing. And on top of that, we're getting to the nub of the issue, which goes well beyond anything anyone's experiencing in excise. And finally, Mr Speaker, I'd love to hear from the member what projects he will cancel because he no longer believes in excise, which has been in place since the 1920s. Question number three, Derek Bull. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is.